Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the live stream today. Give you a hand clap if you join us on the live stream. We greatly appreciate that. It is Monday, and they have now um, daylight savings time is back. Daylight savings time. Um, I, I, I will tell you this. You know, I know today I was like, oh shoot, I gotta let everybody know that's making content in the African continent to post their content one hour ahead. Now over there, they don't do all that back and forth. Now I really believe personally in the United States, we should stay on permanent daylight savings time. I think it's better. You got more daylight to do different things. Now originally the reason why they went back an hour and all of that is, is during the war time and all of that, talking about daylight savings time, you know, whatever. I think it's way past that. It's time to get over it. It needs to be changed. M most people agree. They prefer to be on daylight savings time anyway. You got more daylight to do the things that you want to do and, and, and shorter nights, which is awesome for me, right? It should be awesome for the majority of you. But we know if you follow us on the podcast, the majority of people in Congress, you know, those who probably want to possibly visit Shady Pines, they don't want to change anything. Because you, you know how it is, if you try to change, change anything that grandma and grandpa got used to, it becomes a big problem, it becomes a big mess, even if it's just a small change. So that's the reason why things aren't changing up there, is because of that. Um, if you want to see some changes in Washington, then it's going to have to be on the young people, um, you know, at least the younger generations, I won't say just young people, but younger generations than the silent generation of baby boomers is going to take the Gen Xers. It's going to take the millennials. It's going to take Gen Z to get active, uh, all registered to vote and get candidates in there to get the Clyburns and all them out. You know what I'm saying? They should not be in there to the point that they don't know what they're doing anymore. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying like, when does it become a responsibility on the people in this country? to get those people out of there. Because when I saw the State of the Union address, I, I, I was like, wow, look at this. I mean, this is why our country is falling apart, literally. But with that being said, um, let's check in, just checking in on, on, on everybody and we'll give everybody a minute or so to get on in here. Then we'll get, we'll get to talking about old Tiffany Henyard here, the super mayor of Dalton, Illinois. Um, the reason why I actually wanted to talk about her, and I've been knowing about this story for a while. Sometimes I, I watch stories for a long while. I may not say a whole lot. Sometimes about certain stories, and certain stories I may jump on them. I just feel that certain certain stories, eh, you know, for me, and but maybe it's better for somebody else to do it. And I've always been that way. I'm not going to jump on every story until maybe I see an angle that I can maybe get in on a particular story. And it's something that she said in the midst of all this that I really want to highlight on because black folks, you know, got this bad, something that she says, you know, when you're trying to hold black people accountable for the wrongdoing, et cetera, right? So let's go ahead on and, 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 and get started here, um, talking about the super mayor of Dalton, Illinois. Um, so I'm going to and start a series of videos today and we will be looking at certain things, certain money she's been spending. Um, let's queue up, we're going to queue up the first clip of um, Tiffany here. And when, when she got elected and, and, and all of that, just to give you a little history. So let's go ahead on and cue up old Tiff. There she is. Are you ready to take your oath? Yes. <laughs> Tonight, Dalton's new mayor, Tiffany Henyard, sworn in. Dalton residents, I am reporting for duty. Henyard, now the first woman and the youngest person to ever be elected mayor of the South Suburb. Time has been on the rise in Dalton for a long time. I 
am bringing back Chief Collins, and I am charging him with bringing a comprehensive policing plan to fight crime, create a position of economic development director, and charge him or her with developing a comprehensive economic development plan for Dalton. Dalton, we need jobs. All right. Now, now, when you first hear that, say, oh, okay, all right. Well, she, she's trying to, you know, want to be on the right thing. She want to get crime down. She want to bring, you know, some jobs and businesses to, to, the, um, to the city. So, you know, hey, it sounds, look very promising. She's 37 years old, new blood in there, right? But then something happened. Out of all that fanfare, something happened. Tiffany here. Some people have called her Teflon Tiff. Some people have called her the city girl mayor. There's been a lot of names about this particular woman. She says she's a super mayor. She has been one to promote herself on everywhere, you know, almost like what a dictator would do. Um, billboards all over the place of her, all over this little small town of 20,000 people. And people start noticing money start being missing. And so they kind of question, say, hmm, well, what's, why, why all this money starting to become missing all of a sudden in this, you know, suburb outside of Chicago, right? I think they say it's about, what, 20, 25 minutes or so outside of, you know, Chicago, Illinois. So Tiffany Henyard here, she, she was not liking that people start asking questions about her spending habits, which is taxpayer dollars. They should be asking questions. So we want to queue up another clip here of uh, the super mayor. And let's, let's, let's listen to this here. Cause beyond with you, this lady here is very funny to me. It's not funny, but she's funny. Look, look at, look at up uh, there, big billboards with her on it. And boy, look, look at that hair. Boy, she, she paying a lot of money for that hair, isn't she? Every time I see her, her hair laid. She's just doing what she wants to do. None of them do the things that we do here. We the only ones making sure y'all streets get paid, find ways to fix what is broken. She is Mayor Tiffany Henyard. But then they run in y'all, tell y'all this look, fictitious story. Would you like um, to just do about, an interview okay. with me? Yeah, I got you. I got well, you, let's go. Finish, I mean, yeah. $300,000 between your two elected I positions. Not. I do not. I don't know where you got that number from. We got it from her own village and township records. I do not handle anything as it relates to with credit cards. As you heard me speak today in my board meeting about, I do not handle that. Some of those charges are for you, though. No, sir. You didn't go to Las Vegas? Mm. What, what is that? No comment. You don't know if you were in Las Vegas? Of course I do. Were you? It's not paid by them. Did you fly first class to Las Vegas? Any other questions? All right, any other questions? So you're not going to answer how taxpayer dollars are being spent? That seems I just, odd. I just answered it. What do you mean? I just answered your questions. You said you wouldn't answer about Las Vegas. You asked me a question and I responded. Y'all forget I am the leader. They want to hear from the mayor. If y'all ain't learned that yet. The mayor, not the trustees that don't do nothing, that only run their mouth. Y'all don't do no work, no work. Is the supervisor. Township credit card records show Henyard and other officials spent more than $67,000 on trips to Portland, Austin, Atlanta, and New York City. Many of the flights were first class. So were the accommodations. In Atlanta, Henyard and her team stayed at the Four Seasons Hotel, costing taxpayers more than $9,000. In New York, the bill came to $13,000. Henyard has refused to explain the specific purpose of the trips or why they travel in such style. But she appeared to refer to our reporting at Monday's Dalton meeting. But everything we do, we do for the people. But we under attack. We getting scrutinized in the media. For what? Loving on the people? Showing them that they matter to us? We going through the fires for y'all. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all stuff. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of yourself. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is why I decided to do the stream tonight is that last little bit that she said that y'all black. That's what she saw. She said, you talking attacking a black woman in power. That's why I decided to do the stream. 
Um, I have a big problem with that uh, we're black conversation because saying that we're black is like a shield of accountability from the community. You understand? So the reason why they had a problem with that Four Seasons deal, let, let, me, let me see if I can show y'all real quick about the Four Seasons. Let me, get this, let me get this up on the screen so black people can see what you were spending. Just give me a quick second here. Give me a quick second. Where we at? Where we at? Right. Come on. Come on. Trusty. All right. Since, since we all black, there, there, there we go. All right. So since, since, since we're black, make sure to say we're black. As you can see, the super mayor stayed at the four seasons hotel out in Atlanta. Now I decided to, you know, show you what the guest rooms prices is at the four seasons. Now, Tiffany, it starts off at $620 a night. And that's like your most, that's going from low to high. Okay. And then you scroll down, you know, if you want bed and breakfast, a little higher. Then you got your midtown premier room, $845 bed and breakfast, $893. Then you have your Terra City view. It's 920 in the bed and breakfast. You see that? The suites start at $1,000. A little over 1000 You got the one bedroom suite, the midtown suite. You got the corner suite running you $4,500. Now, I don't think Tiffany did the, the corner suite, but maybe she did and her people did the one bedroom suite. I'm thinking with that kind of price tag. Uh, even if she did the terrace suite because $9,000 at the four seasons and how, how long did you actually stay at the four seasons? Now, let me get back on the screen here, ladies and gentlemen, um, New York, when they talked about that, I can guarantee you, I know what hotel she stayed at in New York. When they said Marriott, she probably stayed at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square, the Marriott Marquis in Times Square run you on average about a little over $500 a night over there. Um, nice hotel. I stayed in that hotel, uh, I think once so far, me and my wife stayed at the Marriott Marquis. And I said, if I ever come back to New York, which I don't plan to come back to New York in a very, very long time, it has to be, I don't think I can even stay in New York city, but I would go back to New York because the way they got that city with the migrants, I don't want to be there. New no, Lord. But anyway, that hotel, very nice hotel, run you about 500 and something a night. So if she took a team of people, like they say, she takes not only her, her, her staff, whoever they are, she takes a, a, the police with her. The police from that city, she take them and they, and they are getting paid 24 hours a day, all on the dime of the taxpayer overtime. This woman is taking these police out of town with her. Then one of the people that work with her had did a bid on being an offender. You know what kind of offender we talking about, an S offender. And yet she hired that dude to work around her. Yeah, he did his time, whatever, but most people don't want those kind of people working around them, right? On top of that, she spent taxpayer dollars and spent, uh, I think $93,000 on a Tahoe so she could ride in. A Chevy Tahoe, really? I, I was more mad that I was more mad that she spent money on a Chevy Tahoe than, than anything else. You, and you gonna spend $93,000. Then it was the worst deal in the world. By the time they done paying for that Tahoe, the Tahoe, they would have paid the city would have paid $149,000. Like what kind of freaking interest rate it was that you got to be to, for 93,000 and you almost paying almost close to half of what you paid in interest. Then they wasn't paying the bills, not because the city didn't want to pay the bills. They almost got their police vehicles repoed because this woman here wasn't making sure the bills get paid, but she taking trips to Vegas. She's running up the tab of food and all of that. She's riding first class. Now listen, Tiffany, super mayor, Tiffany, if you see this video, you don't got to steal from nobody. Let, let me, let me, let me teach you something. Just let me teach you something about the first class thing. Tiffany, 
the city has no problem flying you to events if it has to do with the city. Let's say what you did had to do with the city, right? You're trying to bring more business to Dalton, Illinois. What you do, you tell the city, say, listen, I know y'all gonna pay for a comedy, right? Make the tickets upgradable. That when I go to the counter, I can pay to upgrade my ticket to first class. That's all you had to do, Tiffany. It wouldn't cost you as much to upgrade to first class because if they already paid for an economy ticket, that's all you had to do. If you wanted to stay at the Four Seasons, Tiffany, your whole team can't stay there, but the, I'm pretty sure they put you up at a good spot, but not the Four Seasons. If you want to stay at the Four Seasons, then you let the team stay where the city say they can stay, and then you pay your money and you go stay at the Four Seasons. And you wouldn't be in this problem, Tiffany. You wouldn't. Then on top of that, you created a Tiffany Henyard Cares charity. And then the moment you open up the charity, you took taxpayer money of $10,000 and put it as a donation in your charity when you weren't supposed to do that. Then on top of that, the attorney general of Illinois made you shut down Tiffany Henyard Cares because you wasn't in reporting where the money come from and you weren't even filing your taxes on Tiffany Henyard Cares. Then when you asked about it, I had nothing to do with that. My name not on it, but your face is on it. You're, you, you promoting it on shows, but you had nothing to do with it. Like, come on sister. Like, 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 what are you doing? Then when, let me, let me go back to, let me cue this back up. Cause this, this, this still bothered me. Let me go back to the section I want to go to on this. There we go. Let me back up right here when well, she's ranting. Here we go. Here to refer to our reporting at Monday's Dalton meeting. But everything we do, we do for the people. But we under attack. We getting scrutinized in the media. For what? Loving on the people? Showing them that they matter to us? We going through the fires for y'all. And y'all should be ashamed of y'all stuff. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. We getting scrutinized in the media. For what? Loving on the people? Showing them that they matter to us? We going through the fires for y'all. And y'all should be ashamed of y'all stuff. Y'all black. Y'all are black. Showing them that they matter to us? We going through the fires for y'all. And y'all should be ashamed of y'all stuff. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Shame on y'all black people. Shame on y'all. Cause y'all black. You didn't know you were black? Y'all black. You should not be ever questioning what a black woman in power is doing. Then let me let me jump on her side for a minute. Why y'all question a black woman? Something wrong with y'all. Accountability, don't worry about that. Why are you spending $9,000 at the Four Seasons that you, listen, don't attack a black woman for that. Y'all black. You ought to feel ashamed of yourself. $13,000 at the Marriott, you're black. You should feel ashamed of your doggone self. What's wrong with you? Why are you questioning why tax dollars is going to all these luxury places? You're black, right? See, th this, is, this is what we got to deal with as a community. When we try to hold someone accountable, it's thrown in our face that we're black. That look, y'all, I'm at a point in my life, I am so done of hearing the word somebody using black as a preface or something to me. I don't don't tell me that. Just show and prove what you can do. Well, you know, we gotta support black people. We gotta support black, because you know, we black. No, no, no. Uh-uh. I wanna see what you can do and show me you for black people about what you do for the community. That's it. Show me what you can do for black people. I don't hear all that we black. Don't leave that we black. I mean, yeah, it's obvious. Duh. We black, right? But she's, and she says we. It was not we, it's you, ma'am. It's you. It's not we, it's you. How is it we all of a sudden? You speaking French? You the one spending the money. You the one taking the trips. It's not no we over there. They've had so many meetings and those people have been so angry at her. They tried to recall her, but she, for some reason, got out of it through the courts. Cause they tried to recall her. 
So they, they literally stuck with this tyrant, because that's what she's acting like. She, she stuck with this tyrant. But see, let me t Tiffany, they've had mayors. And this is the deal, Tiffany. You, now, let me go there and say it like you. You black. So that means you're going to be more scrutinized about everything you do than them other white mayors. Does Kwame Kilpatrick ring a bell and many other names that have went to federal prison behind things they've done while they were mayor? But, but Tiffany here was not only taking money, she's running around here like she's some sort of gangster. She's run up like, like she in power. I, I don't know if she's been watching power or something and, and, and she's run up on businesses and like, Hey, you know, donate to my campaign and you know what I'm saying? And, and everything be all good. But if you don't donate to my campaign, I'm, I'm, I'm a shut down your uh, business license. Or I'm gonna send the police to raid you all the time. Oh yeah. Tiffany getting down. Like she's like, she on power. Like seriously, you need to ask 50 to, to make it, make her a character or something. But so Tiffany has, has been doing so much dirt in Dalton that black folks got tired. Black folks, remember black. So let, let's, let's, let's play this, this last clip of a brother that was sick and tired of Tiffany. And he said, you know what? I'm tired. I, I, I got to go to the FBI now. Let's go ahead and cue this up. You've talked to seem serious about yes, serious, very serious. Your concerns. Very, very serious. Very. Lawrence Gardner owns a U-Haul rental and trucking business in South Suburban Dalton and says he went to the FBI several months ago, frustrated that the village of Dalton would not renew his business license. Gardner says he's been harassed and his business raided and shut down by Dalton police, he believes because he refused to make a donation to a civic event sponsored by Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard. And I talked to a couple of agents and I explained them what was going on. I gave them all my paperwork to show them what was happening in court and what was happening in Dalton. And they told me they was investigating and they would be in touch with me. Gardner is one of six people who confirmed to Fox 32 that they've been interviewed by the FBI, ranging from Dalton business owners to a former village employee and at least one public official. And we've learned the FBI has been using electronic surveillance as part of its investigation. Agents are asking questions about Henyard's alleged use of taxpayer dollars and resources. Yeah, Tiffany, that's that's not good, Tiffany. But I'm sorry, I gotta cue I gotta cue you up again, Tiffany. I'm sorry, I gotta cue you back up, Tiffany, because uh, this 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 is like epic for me. I love this. Let me cue it back up. Wrong one. Hold on, guys. I'm playing the wrong one, but I got the right one on the screen. Just give me a second. I got to cue this up. I, I, just, I just like to hear her ranting about black. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all stuff. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all self. <laughs> this, woman, this woman is funny to me, man. I'm telling y'all, this woman funny. <laughs> y'all black. Y'all black. Y'all should feel ashamed of y'all self. Well, well, Tiffany, you should feel ashamed of yourself. Well, a, a black man had to go to the FBI, the white FBI, because you're stealing funds, ma'am. You black, you should feel ashamed of yourself that other people had to go to the white FBI in Chicago to be saying, hey, she's stealing all our money and we, we tried to talk to her about it, but she's not doing what she's supposed to do. So, so I guess when the FBI come holler at you, right? I guess you're gonna be out there with Benjamin Crump talking about this racism. Oh, they're attacking me because I'm black. And it's racism and they don't want uh, the youngest black, one of the young black mayors in America to, to, to be successful. That's what you're going to turn it into. I, I can literally see that with her coming. It's not all the money she's been spending is that she black. Uh, yeah. Somebody mentioned that. Uh, yeah. I remember that Rashad Tate, uh, from uh, power. Yeah. That's how, that's how she acting like too. She, she, yeah, yeah Tiffany's acting just like Rashad Tate from uh, Power. That's exactly who she acting like. Corrupt, dirty, got his hands in everything, dirt, but he a politician. That's, that's exactly who she's acting like. Just like that. Yep, that's a real life Rashad Tate in the dress. But black folks deserve proper representation. They do. 
Um, and we just because somebody's black, we should not tolerate uh, theft. We should not tolerate attitude. We shouldn't tolerate mediocre service because one thing that, that sometimes that black people like to do is when we call them out on their service or something like that, or maybe we just asking them to improve something or work on something. The first thing they throw up at you is we black. No, it's not that we black. Just try to hear what's being said and let's try to fix it. Okay. And even if you talk back to the person and say, okay, I appreciate you letting me know. I'm, we're going to try to do everything we can to apply this or fix this issue or whatever. Sometimes, you know, now in businesses, it's totally different. I mean, it could be a funding issue, whatever, but this woman is in service of the people and she's stealing money. Okay. That's basically what she's doing. You know, when you're in public office, you, you have a, maybe a city credit card, but you can't just spin like that. Then when these people wanted to have certain meetings, she was locking them out where they couldn't get in the meeting. There's one particular lady that called her out. She took her picture down off of the wall. Uh, that's one of the trustees. So the lady had to sit up there and have her picture up while they're having meetings. I mean, it is a complete mess. And the whole world is literally watching this silly woman act a fool like that. And, and, and she, and she thinks she doing something. That's the thing. Like you really think you're writing what you're doing. And, and, and that's the deal. Boulay Martin, she went on Boulay Martin's platform. She did a whole interview of Boulay Martin and he didn't pin her down on nothing. He didn't ask her for nothing. That's why people don't like to listen to Boulay Martin. He's so sold out to the Democrats. He can't even think about black people. He can't. That was, that was like, a lot of people, I, I, I even looked at the chat of that. A lot of people say, man, bro, like, really? You going to let her get away with lying like that to you for almost a whole freaking hour? She's lying and you didn't question her. But, but they said that one of the trustees, uh, uh, I think the brother's name, Jason House, went on Boulay Martin's platform and he was acting like he was a freaking FBI interrogator to that brother and the Brad brother not stealing no money. So you're attacking the black man who's not stealing money, but the, the black, the black woman who's stealing money from the community, you, you let her to lie, not even a question her. That's why I told y'all when it comes to people like Boulay Martin, they're going to expose themselves. Nobody got to make videos about them. That was ridiculous because you better believe if I had to interview Tiffany Henyard, I'd have been worse than that man asking about that trip to Los Angeles. I'm sorry, Las Vegas. I would have been worse because I take a big issue with black politicians harming the black community like that. That is a city full of black people. And she's up there taking money and harming black. Look, you taking $7 million away and spending on everything else, but the people out of 20,000 black people, that could have been some resources, you know, done uh, for the people. Hell, if anything, 20,000 people, if I was the mayor, I would have did reparations. Why not? Hey, we're going to do reparations for my people in Dalton for slavery. Who going to stop me? You know what I'm saying? Like, Hey, we all going to vote on it. We all black, right? So we're going to vote on reparations. Trust me. They'd have loved that she'd have voted for reparations. They'd have loved her dirty draws. Instead of doing reparations and putting money in the taxpayer back pocket, right? No, you steal it. Like, so like y'all politicians, y'all, and you know, a lot of these Democrats, y'all are so silly. Y'all don't even realize just to get people to love you, get people on your side and how you get people on your side is giving them things. It's not that hard. And listen, a city like Dalton is full of black people. You don't have to deal with all these different groups and, and there are all these different groups wanting this and wanting that. And oh, well this, and what about us? And you got a city literally full of black people. All you had to do, Tiffany, was just do right by black people. Trust me, Tiffany, if you did right by black people, they probably wouldn't even took an issue with you flying first class. If you were doing right by them, Tiffany, y'all haven't figured that out yet. You got to give to the people, make sure the people are good, make sure the people are happy. And then when the people are happy, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiffany can fly first class, man. Tiffany taking care of us. I mean, we good over here, man. I love Tiffany. That's all you got to do. I don't understand you politicians. Like, you don't have to be greedy. You actually get more if you're not greedy. It's stupid. Like it's dumb. Like Brandon Johnson, the next city over. If he was done right by black people and listen to black people, he wouldn't be in the position he's in right now. 
So many black people are upset with Brandon Johnson right now. He's literally then ruined his, his self, ruined his legacy for the Democrat party. Literally going to break the city of Chicago economically with migrants. I'm sorry. I'm not about to sit up and, and purposely ruin my legacy with my community for other groups. I'm not doing it because these other groups are not going to have me at my back. They're not going to come to my rescue. The only people going to have my back and come to my rescue is my community. That's it. That's the only people that I can look to and lean on. If for whatever the reason, they the only people that's going to forgive me for something if I need it. Those other groups are not going to forgive me. They're not going to have my back. So I'm not selling out for them. Forget that. If it takes me longer to get to a certain place because I won't sell out for some other group, I'll take that longer path. I'll, I'll drive that extra thousand miles if I got to. I'd rather get there with my dignity and self-respect and the respect of my community than getting there shorter, doing stuff for other groups, and at the end, those other groups won't have my back. Look at every black politician that tap danced and did stuff for other groups outside the black community. Look at them today. None of them have respect. Amy say they lie in their pockets. But you don't have to worry about lying in your pockets. If you do right by the community, the community would say, Hey, you know, I think the mayor need a raise. Look at what she did for us. Hey, the mayor need this because look what she did for us. That's all you have to do with people is make sure they're good. That's it. They will love you if you make sure they're good with people. But unfortunately people think, well, I can, I, they don't need nothing. That, if I give them this, I'm not going to be able to get that. You got to know how to invest in the people. And that's really the problem with politics in general. They don't know how to invest in the people. And that's why people feel the way they feel about politicians. But see, this is that local level, you know, politics, which affects us a lot more than your Bidens, right? Biden do affect you, but Tiffany going to affect them a whole lot more than Biden would ever will. Or after uh, Tiffany is going to be J.B. Prisker in Illinois. He's going to affect them. And that's why we have to be real. Uh, we need to vet people. Not just because they black, but we need to vet who people are. Hey, what is your policies? You know, I, I'm sorry, but it's just how I feel personally as, as a man. I don't think I would want someone being a, a mayor or something over money and you never held a business. Because all of a sudden you go from not knowing anything about money at all to now you've been put in a position where you're in charge of money and you never seen money before. You never seen certain amounts of money. You never knew how to manage money. Now you can say, well, they can hire people around them. Yeah. But this is the deal about that. You still want to know a little bit about money because then that's how people get around you and, and, and get you in some mess or steal money or whatever. Right? See, if Tiffany was smart, Tiffany would have did a forensic audit the moment she got hired of the city of Dalton and, uh, the, she's a, I think she's a supervisor of Thornton township. If I would have did that, I would, I would want to, I brought I would bring in forensic auditors and I say, I need to know where every dime in this city has been going and who's been doing it. And please bring me, I need that report because I'm going to hold people accountable right then and there. If we have any kind of, you know, windfall and then you put the report up and let everybody see what's been going on. And then you look at all the issues and problems. You get on the ground, you talk to the people. Hey, where the potholes at? Hey, is there any issues with crime? Where this, where that? And then the same thing. Oh, you mentioned crime. Okay, we let them know. Hey, crime not going to be tolerated here. I say, if you don't, if you don't want to be in jail, you better leave. I say, because I'm going to, I'm going to act like, uh, uh, you ain't going to like me. Trust me. Because <laughs> if I had to be a mayor, you criminals would hate me. They were like, man, I had to leave that town. That dude, they don't let us breathe. Because I'll tell the police, if you see them law loitering, I'll pass the ordinance that you couldn't even hang out. Now, I'll pass that kind of ordinance. So if I catch you hanging out, oh, no, 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 roll up on you. Hey, what you doing? Let me give you this, this, this $5,000 fine for loitering in the street all day. Go to work somewhere, and you won't get these kind of fines. Because we know who the troublemakers are. Like, like I'm, I mean, y'all could, I'm telling people, you, I'll be a, so, such a tough dude. They wouldn't like me too much. And that's fine. Leave my city. Leave. Don't be here. Because we, we want peace. We want, we want it where women can walk on the street at 2 a.m. and don't have to worry about getting robbed. Or worse. Right? 
Any of you illicit massage parlors, you better leave now, cause we're raiding you tomorrow. Yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want me, but at the same time, I'll make sure you got paper in your pocket. That's the difference. Well, you, you mentioned, you mentioned, uh, uh, why, why, why you had it with D Osborne, why you said, listen, I don't like when it comes to organized crime or people just hanging out. No, go to work, go to work. If you working from home, go do that. Go to work, go do something. Stop hanging out all day. A grown man hanging out all day. Listen, do you, have you realized that people that got jobs or whatever, notice they don't hang out in the streets. They're not hanging out on the corner. I have not met one working person hanging out on the corner. Not a one. People that's outside the exercise and doing whatever. The only people that need to be out in the corners is the construction workers that's fixing things on the corner. Or you're catching a bus or whatever the case may be. But you as a grown man don't even be hanging out on the corners all day. No. I heard Dalton used to be very nice. I, I, I heard that. They said it was a very nice place, but then it, it kind of went down. I, I've heard that. Now, because you know some, because you know if you have a black person come in and talk like me, then in this, unfortunately in in this community, unfortunately, some of them will say, "Oh, he he acting like them them people." Oh, he, like okay, so acting like the people want the black community to be safe—that's wrong. Like, so I should allow crime a safe neighborhoods being like them people. Right. But you, but you would leave a black neighborhood and go stay with the folks at because the folks got their neighborhood, you know, quiet and don't have no crime, but you don't want somebody to come in and make your neighborhood like that. Uh, -uh I'm just saying that like, that doesn't make sense. And I'm glad a lot of things are starting to change in the community. Like that stupidity like that is starting to go away. Um, you having a lot of black people say, yeah, I, I want our neighborhoods just as safe as anybody else's neighborhood. I want, you know, the same businesses. Why should we have to leave our neighborhood to go to somebody else's? I mean, we should have a whole foods in our neighborhood. We should have a lifetime or Equinox gym in our neighborhoods. You know, we should have top of the line daycares, top of the line movie theaters. We should have everything in our neighborhoods where realistically speaking, you're not going to have those things in your neighborhoods if you allow or crime is allowed, I would say, by the mayors and by the police. And then when brothers and sisters try to handle that problem, then you want to shut them down. So you have to handle it at the administrative level. But it takes a mayor. And think about it. Tiffany, actually, over just 20,000 people, could really make that city safe. You don't have to have a whole lot of... It's not like she's over millions of freaking people. That's, you know, it takes a lot of work to do that, too. Oh. But no, she, she, she wants to fly first class and she wants to stay at the Four Seasons, which the average person in, in freaking Dalton won't probably won't even see the Four Seasons because they're like, man, I ain't going to stay nowhere to $600 a night. No. Look, look, Eric Gray says, Eric Gray says here, Safe neighborhoods shouldn't mean increased policing. Sh should mean, and, and instead, neighborhoods need to be focused on uh, building local solidarity. Um, it's not about increased policing. It's about running out the riffraffs. Listen, most police know who the riffraffs are. They know. And if they would just do a crackdown, like a, like a, a 90 day crackdown, and they own them to the point that they say, look, leave the city. You can't be here no more. If, you, if you're doing illegal activity, you're going to, you're going to jail. I'm, I'm warning you, you're going to jail. Leave the city and don't come back. And then you make sure to start doing that and you just start getting them out of the paint where people can be safe again. Then you don't got to have all that policing like that. But you have to establish, um, in order to get peace, you got to show strength. Sometimes you got to show brute force strength to certain elements for them to understand that we're going to have peace here because all our residents expect us to make sure they're safe. It, it, it's just that simple. Now see, Eric, unfortunately, you don't like those kind of tactics, but I support tactics like that if they are done in a way 
where they say, Hey, this is what we're doing. We're not going to have this no more. Black community should be just as safe as any other community. Well, King Shaw, black mayors won't do reparations because the Democrat party don't want to do reparations. You got to understand the majority of your mayors are Democrat. You're right. Tiffany could do reparations right now. if She wants to right now, but she's not going to do it because, well, she's too much to worry about lying in her pocket. So you can forget that reparations. Listen, Tiffany is getting her reparations right now. Tiffany has never been had access to the four seasons. Tiffany's a single mother. She hadn't had no access to no four seasons. She had no access to no first class plane tickets. She haven't had no access to the Marriott Marquis in freaking uh, Times Square. Tiffany haven't ac had access to any of that. So that's why she didn't lost her mind. That's why I'm saying it should have been a black person. They already kind of seen that already. So they're not going there for, for trips and all they're going there to actually help the people. Well, always something. Yes, I understand that. But see, you said think you didn't know. You have to vet people that they should have vetted Tiffany. Like I said, I don't, at this stage in the game, I wouldn't feel comfortable putting somebody in leadership that did not have a business background. That's just me. I don't care if that person had a small business. It had to be a, a big Walmart or a Target corporation. It can be a small business and they've been open a few years. At least I know they're used to managing money, managing teams. They are used to certain ways of management that people that never been in business really don't have, unless they was like maybe a manager in a certain company and they was used to certain things that way. But I wouldn't put Tiffany in that position. So, but you know, they tried to recall her. They tried. And unfortunately she couldn't get recalled, but let's see what, let's see what happens. Let, let's see what happens. Let's, let's see what happens. You say the NYPD is going after firemen who booed Letitia James. Yeah, that, that, that's another city that's a racket, California, a racket. Like it, it's, it, it's a big, uh, it, it's a big to do. And I got so many different stories to cover on the black, uh, I'm sorry. Um, the podcast Lord, what Biden is doing, he is ruining everything. Um, Biden is flying more migrants in every month from four different countries. Um, Maryland is voting to give um, foreign nationals who aren't legal in this country um, health insurance like California did. There's so much going on. There's so much going on that we got to cover. But thank you once again for joining us on the uh, stream today. We greatly appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. It's very, very important. Also, thank you for joining us on the uh, app is greatly appreciated. Or if you just join us on the website itself, it's all the same thing. Just get your membership, whether it's monthly, quarterly, or yearly, it greatly supports us. And also you get content on there that you will not get on this particular platform because of their rules. Their rules are their rules. I'm not gonna argue with that, but we put whatever stories you want to over on the app. Make sure you also subscribe to the Black Congregation that is our channel doing news just out of black America. We're posting content there every day, uh, normally around five o'clock, 5 PM or so. Um, so make sure you check out the content over there. Make sure you subscribe and also the Phil Scott podcast as well. Um, we normally do our podcast at 10 PM central standard time. So thank y'all for listening and we'll see y'all.